Hello all, and welcome to the stream. There was a follower earlier, I think. Furry slip. Thanks. All right. So, welcome to the stream. Today is a little bit special because today is the first day of the One Lone Coder Code Jam of 2020 has started. There was another one? In SPL also, thanks. Has no name yet, so we're calling it Project M. <clears throat> Alright, so what this is about is basically we're given a theme, and we have to design something in nine days. Holy moly. Did my, like, apps, my program stop working and now it's, like, catching up? Goodness. Well, that's gonna probably go on for a minute. The theme is the Great Machine, so I've come up with what I want to build. I've wanted to build this for quite some time, and it is basically um, something akin to Manufactoria, I believe? Which was a Flash game where you basically put robots in their place. So it's kind of like a programming type of game, so that's going to be fun to, to go through. I swear. <laughs> How many... How many people have appeared? I need to do this. Um, I have decided I want to implement this in JavaScript. Um, partly because I want more experience with using the uh, canvas. And I know um, developing something in it could be kind of fun. So that's what I am going to be doing. All the follows, oh my gosh. Um, so this will be going on for nine days. So my schedule is gonna be kind of flip-flopped. What we're gonna be doing is, I think we're gonna be doing this in the mornings. Well, okay, this at nights because it's night right now in America. And in the mornings, we'll do Project Diva when I wake up. And then we'll jump into either Project Diva programming or more Project Diva and this, so. So we're gonna have this set up. This actually, I don't know if I want to do it here. I might not just, I might, I might just not do it here. Uh, I'll just do this. That makes things, makes things a little easier. Where the heck is it? Okay. That should set us up. Canvas first. That would be nice. Mm. 
I think I can just do... Buddy, yeah. I, I'm actually not sure how I want to do the sizing yet, so we're just gonna do this for now. Can't tell if it's there or not. Oh, right. Wait, so it's not actually there. All right. Oh, I guess I did have this, huh? That's kind of why I made it. Although it's still not there. Uh, I guess the question is, is this actually running? Or I can look here, right? This has to be afterload, which makes more sense, yeah. Okay. It's a good starting point, I guess. not there. Maybe it's not called canvas, or if it is, it's that's not right. <laughs> I wonder if I don't think I need caps. I'd be worried if I did. I guess that makes more sense. I wonder why it's like that though. I, I see. Hmm. 
What does that mean for the actual canvas size? It's a certain set, it's a certain amount of pixels? I guess. Do game logic and the draw logic. Uh, this needs to be whatever a thousand divided by sixty is. We can figure that out. And this should repeatedly draw it, but we're gonna make it so it gets cleared every time. Actually, I don't think that will work, but let's see. I forgot what I had to do after I did fill. Oh, I guess there's a fill wreck too. That's helpful. Yeah, that makes sense. What about the actual width and height? I guess that would be... I guess it gets set after the fact. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. Alright. <clears throat> uh, color. So now we have a blank slate that's refreshing every one sixtieth of a step. So now, let's first decide how we're going to establish this game, so to speak. Because we're not really worried on the graphics right now, we're worried about the logic. So the logic of the game is going to be having, uh, I guess we'll have like a state, so... Yeah, so game state will be represented as a couple of values. Uh, let's see. 
values we can use are like um they're stopped or like waiting waiting and then there's running what else do we need there's waiting there's running I guess that's it for now. Those are the only two states we need. We need one state in order to control when bots are, like, running their logic, and one when they're waiting. And then we need, like, something that slows down the steps, so it's not always running. So, that will be controlled by, like, game speed. And there'll be a multiplier of how fast it is in relative, like, how many frames to wait before doing the next step. So we can do, like, uh, I don't know. Let's do like... Three... Five steps every second? No, not even that. It's gotta be really slow. The reason is because we want the player to actually see what's going on. Hey there, Spams. Oh, so as for the bot... I guess we want to have like a grid, but the grid is gonna have... Uh, objects in it. The grid should actually be fashioned based on like the level. Set up grid. I'll do that. It's just gonna be an empty array at the start, and then it's gonna be filled with an object, and the object describes what is in that square. I see. Write a width and height for the grid, and that'll set us up appropriately. push instead. Okay. That's more along the lines of what we want. Game grid gets cleared at the start as well. So if we're starting, I guess we'll set up the level. Or just do something simple for now. I'll put it to make sure it's produced the correct result. Should be 25 objects with no properties in it. Good. All right. So we need to design uh, the game behaviors. So at the start of the game, the bot will actually reside in a square. We, we have to decide what square. So, I'll just say, make a place bot function and just place a bot. Game grid. Uh... I guess it would actually be game grid y dot game grid y x because of the way we have it set up. Each element represents one y down. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just gonna say... Type... Bot. We're just gonna put that for now. So if I do place bot at position 3, 0, or let's realistically like 0, 3, puts us here? No, here? Yeah, here. Okay. Put it there for now. Put it right in the middle. Okay. <clears throat> So with that in place, uh, behaviors. Run bot. This only happens if game state is equal to running. Running bot. Right now it's not doing anything. Change this to running. It should pop up messages every... A whole bunch of messages. And then... We're actually gonna do it based on game speed. So we're gonna slow it down. We're gonna wait... How do I interpret this? I have to interpret this by number of frames. So like... I guess we can get the current time and the last time we ran, and if it's us, we run it. Uh, I think it's just date. Let me see. I think that can turn into microseconds. Is that really what I have to do? I don't think that's what I want. What I want is... I mean, maybe, I guess. There's like... Oh, here we go. Sort of. Get time. Okay. Uh, time. Uh, get time from a date, I guess. Alright, that works. That's what I'm looking for. Last game update. So we'll say if last game update is less than uh, this value plus game speed and update. So this should this message should appear once every three three times every second. Okay, I didn't actually update the last game update value. Plus, wait, how about this? There we go. All right, so that's once every, that's three times every second. So that's controllable now. If I set to like uh, 60, I'll do it every frame. Or every... 
Once every 60 milliseconds. Okay, so this is milliseconds, basically. Uh, so I think 16 is 60 frames a second, or close to it. No, I think it's even less. What is it? What is 1,000 divided by 16? Or 1,000 divided by 60. 16. Okay. Okay, it's close enough. Uh, anyway, it's never gonna be that value. It's gonna be pretty high. Actually, what I should do is I should put this. That actually makes more sense. Alright. Cool. So that's if we're running. We're not running right now. Waiting. So we're gonna be given a set of rules to follow, and we have to actually, uh... apply them. So, I think how this is going to work is we'll make a level, uh, well, let me get the basic mechanics down. Let me get all the stuff, like if the grid is, if the bot is running, what, what does it, what is it supposed to do? I guess I'll run at one second right now, once a second, because I'm going to have to do a lot of update checking. And we'll just set up a basic grid that I can actually make use of. So I'm gonna kinda do a makeshift grid real fast. Maybe I should make some variables that represent different objects. That would be good. Built. Do I wanna do... Directions? I mean, not really. I mean, I do want to do directions. Type. Belt. Direction. We'll provide, like, constants for that. So we got up. Right. Down. And left. Then we can just substitute those. We have constants for each type of piece, I guess. Now, belts should be able to, like, overlap each other, too, so... Like, for example, we can put a right belt and an up belt, or a down belt and left belt, like, together, on the same square. So if that happens, um, I guess we need, we either need constants for that or we need a way to handle that. Maybe we can just say both objects get pushed together into one. I guess that's okay. If direction is down and direction is something else. Hmm. I guess we can just specify a direction 2, which will be by default undefined, but if there is a direction 2, defines a secondary direction. Alright, and we're also going to need those uh, conditionals, so I guess we'll call them branches. And the branches have three properties. They're going to have a direction, which is which way they're facing. And then they're going to have a color. And the color is going to be one of a couple values. I actually want red to be zero. Blue, green, yellow. We can provide some others, too, because we might use them at some point. I need another color. Orange. Pink. 
Let's do pink. Okay. By default, they will be... Uh, blue-red. So, providing the two colors, I guess, is not really important. Right now. But, by default, that's what they will be. Color 1 points left. Color 2 points right. Just a small rule for that. French left, right, up. Okay. Those are basic branches. There will be... We'll basically allow the user to customize them at some point. We'll also have writers, kind of the same style, just a writer instead of branch. Ah, crud. Press the shortcut for in selection, but it didn't register. I didn't press the right or something. Branch to writer, there we go. So those are the those are the basics. We can implement them pretty quick, I think. That's kind of the objective of today is try to get most of these implemented, and then uh, we'll be pretty good to go for tomorrow, I think. All right. So let's just make a quick um quick level i guess at some point i should make a way to specify like a stage or something maybe in its own file that might be the best way who knows but we'll see for now though Levels. Either that or just specify a level. So this is the game's grid, but I kind of want to do a makeshift grid of our own. I feel like I should make this return and act the actual grid itself. Call this create grid instead. Like that. That should work just fine. That way, I can just do this. I don't know if I want to do a function for that, really. Maybe I do. Either that, or I can just specify it myself. I don't know, I thought originally I wanted to do it that way, but now I think I want to just manually do it anyway. It's a little more flexible this way. I feel. Something like that. Sounds fine. What are you programming? So I'm going to be working for... For this code jam, I'm going to be making a... Kind of like a programming type of game. Uh, very similar to a game called Manufactoria. And what you do is you basically have to build a... 
machine, basically, that sends robots to their place. Um, the robots have like certain, they have like a tape represented with colors, and depending on certain logic, like a robot has to have, I don't know, an even amount of blue, or like a certain amount of red or something, and then those can pass. All the other ones have to fail. And then you have to build a logic machine that sorts the robots based on that criteria and accepts the ones that are allowed to, or that meet it and fail the ones that don't. Get rid of them. That's the, that's the idea. That's the what I'm going to be developing for this game jam. So, it's not... I don't think it's too complex, and I would like to develop something to play on a phone, so I'm actually making it uh, in JavaScript, so it's like viewable in a web browser and easily viewable on a handheld device as well. That's kind of the objective. Uh, let's see, I don't have a... Let me make an object type for a bot, and I'll just insert that in there. Spot. Spot. That works. Type. I guess a bot is going to have a moving direction. Or we can just call it direction, I guess. And it'll always start right. So this can be where the bot is. We'll do... So first I'll be developing belt movement, and so I want to be able to test that a bot can move around if we have belts placed around the field. It's all going to be done in a t console right now, text, no graphics until all the game logic is done. General rule of programming design, you never want to have to deal with graphics while dealing with game logic. Always develop the game logic first. Sounds cool? Yeah. It's a little project. I don't... I had to choose something that I could develop in nine days without spending like forever on it. So I'm like, alright, this sounds pretty cool. And the theme was, like, the, the theme got announced this morning, so this is day one. The theme is The Great Machine, so we have to design something with that theme. You don't... You don't really get any other details other than the great machine, so it's you're kind of it's kind of left to your imagination. So I decided I would work on a game based on building a machine that sorts robots. I think that's pretty fitting, and I think it's a good opportunity for me. So that's what I'll be doing. All right. So when we're running the game, but we're gonna have to do logic. So this is where we're gonna add in our logic. Whatever square we're on, when this update occurs, we're gonna have to first try to move to the next square or see what's on the next square. So based on our direction. Uh, also, we have to know where the bot is. So first we have to find the bot. I guess we can keep track of the bot's location though. Like, that's not really something we need to... You know what? I feel like when I do this, I need to copy the object itself and not just reference that because these are all... These can all change. Or can they? Let me think. No, these cannot change. Uh, actually, they can. <laughs> Dang it, I need to make like something that wraps all this up. Because it's going to look messy if I just do it like this. But I'll think of something later. For now, I guess we'll just handle it like this. Now the bot, I feel like the bot object can go somewhere else. Uh, 
pot. I don't know, it's supposed to represent a placeholder for where the bot is located, but I guess we're going to control that manually as well. Bot X. Something like that. All right, so then we can do this switch based on our direction, which we also need to track, I think. Bot direction. Up, up is up. So we're gonna get the state of whatever the square adjacent of us is. Next square. Next square will be equal to uh grid. Let's see, so if we're going up, it's gonna be y minus one x. Left is x minus one, right is x plus one, and down is y plus one. So I'll give us those. I'm gonna condense this down. Once we know what the next square is, we can decide what we we're supposed to do. So we're gonna be moving onto that square. But I guess we're not actually gonna be doing anything quite yet. I guess depending on what the next square is, we will change our... Oh, you know what? The bot can be on top of other squares. So maybe we need a property that says the bot is on the square, or we just represent that with x and y. I think that's better. So, if the previous square was equal to bot, I guess we're gonna take that off. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the bot square idea, so we're not gonna use that anymore. Because the bot square is gonna be represented by bot x and bot y, so we don't need this. This is just going to represent the game map. Okay. That that makes it easier to understand. Next square is going to determine how we change what we're doing on the next turn. So basically we move, then we say, all right, which direction am I going to head in next based on my current status? So if next square is a belt, well, if a next square is anything, we're going to look at the direction property and say, okay, you're going in that direction next. So, we're going to say next square dot direction. If it has a direction, set bot direction to that direction. I don't see why it wouldn't have a direction, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And that'll be the next square. So over the course, oh, and then we have to move, I guess. So we get the next square, we move to the square. So bot X becomes... Well, I guess we do this. We're moving up, bot Y minus one. I'm just gonna do this, easier. I don't think today we'll be seeing anything uh, graphics-wise. Today is all uh, just engine work, so nothing, nothing visual. We're, we're gonna the visuals we're gonna get are gonna be in this console, and that's it. But 
tomorrow we'll probably have all the game mechanics, the core game mechanics in, so we'll implement the graphics either tomorrow or day three. And then after that we can start writing actual levels, because I think day three we need to be having some actual game levels to play. And then days four through six, or days four through seven, is just building more and more content. That's all games are, chugging out lots of content. And then eighth day is polish. Seventh and eighth day really are polish. I have some stretch goals. But that's... The stretch goals are only if we complete everything, so we'll decide that when we get there. We have to do a lot of stuff first. We have to let the player be able to build the machine itself. We have to make the bot's actual logic, and we have to do level checking. So like, this level has this logic, so these ones should work and these ones should not work. We have to build like the algorithm that determines that. Um, I need to make a repository for this thing as well, so I can constantly commit to it, so if I, I screw something up badly, we have a major revision to back up to. Let's go for a new repository, we'll call this, um... I'm gonna call it Project M for now. I, again, that's not permanent, but that's its code name. I don't know what to call it yet. It's kind of hard to figure out a name at this point in the game when I don't really have... Well, I have a theme for the game, but I don't know how it'll look. The game will decide its look eventually. So let's create a new... Actually, I'll just clone the repo into here. Or into... Hmm. I guess I can... It's gonna complain the directory's not empty, though. I'll just make it right here. I'll clone the repo here, move the files into there. It'll be fine. Uh, so we'll do that. Gonna have to reload them because it's gonna say they're gone. No, no. Open. And then we can do our first commit. Git add star git commit m. Um, initialize game engine and engine git push. Alright, cool. Done. Alright, time to go home. Just kidding. Oh, yeah. Keep that open for when I need it. Okay. That should be pushed up. Perfect. Alrighty, so. Uh, we have a bot that actually traverses the grid already, so let's check that out, shall we? Um, if there is no direction... Alright, so here's where things get interesting. If there is no direction for the bot to move in, it dies. So, we're gonna say the bot state. I guess the bot state will actually be like... Bot state will either be alive or dead. Up here, uh, waiting, running, and we'll have a new state called reviewing, which is what happens when the level finishes. You get you get to review it basically. So, right now, this part only runs when the game state is running. So the moment we uh, switch to the reviewing state, the game loop stops. So the bot state is alive right now. It's going to be set to dead, and we're going to go to the reviewing state if we reach this point. I need to clone. There we go. So it's going to go... Reviewing... Art reviewing. Uh... Game state equals reviewing, and bot state is dead. All right. There's what we're gonna do. If bot well, if bot state is dead, bot x and bot y are gonna become, I guess, negative one. 
Let's actually make it so if it's negative one, it doesn't like render at all. And then we'll draw the grid. Um, we'll draw the grid, and when we draw the grid, we have to render like all the stuff. So that's gonna go under the draw, really. I guess I'll move this to the draw where we're console logging. However, or should I do that? No, let's not do that for now. Let's do this. Console log the game grid. But we're going to make a modification to the game grid. So, uh, map grid will be equal to game grid. And then on the map grid, we'll implant the character, or the character, the bot, into where it's supposed to go. If it's alive, that is. If bot x is not equal to negative 1, and bot y is not equal to negative 1, put boy. That will make the map grid uh, display the bot at those positions. And we're just going to write, or we're going to put... We're gonna take whatever's there already, and we're gonna say... Actually, all we have to do is add to it. So we'll just say... Bot... No, 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 no. How do we do this? This is just for the display grid, so... I guess that's what map grid is for, but now the map grid is the game grid. The display grid will have the map grid in it. And then we're gonna modify. I guess we don't need this then because we're gonna be doing the same thing anyway. Just making random variables. We just need a visual way to display where the bot is, so I guess I will make the bot property say bot or something. And display that. That's like the best way I could do it right now, so I can actually see what's on that square as well. Uh, so right now it's the game state's not running, so that's not happening, but once we started running, we need to set up the level as well. So I will set the game state to running and load the level, load level one. So set up game, load level, level one. Make a function called load level, which includes a level. And then make game grid equal to that. And we don't even need to do, well, I guess we still have to do set up game, but we don't need to do this anymore. All right. I guess when we do load level, we can choose where the buckets placed. That would be easier. Bot X, bot Y. And do place bot there. That makes more sense to me. Zero comma two. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and... It should have stopped already, but apparently it didn't, so I'm gonna have to see why. It didn't move, so that's telling me it's not working. If game state's running, run bot. Yes. I guess I could actually display something in the... on here. That would also work, I guess. 
I just outputted it. I would have to loop through it though. I'll, I'll figure that out in a minute here. Um, Still going? Yeah, it's still going. Oh, there's an error. I didn't even read it. Grid is not defined. Oh. Right. It would help if I use the actual variable name. Uh, y is not defined. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't I just move the bot while checking this? Because we know we're going to move there anyway. that by one. Alright. It should have stopped already, but we're gonna ignore that for a second. Bot is true. Bot is true. Wait, do I not actually adjust it? What? in it this goes back to this previous state Direction is now I guess I could have just did this. Uh, that's interesting. I just realized it keeps creating this grid. I don't really need it to create it here actually. Um, also, I'm going to put this in a function, render, render game, do that. I mean, render game has to always run, but render game for now will be in here, actually. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's not changing. How is it not changing? Oh wait. Now they all have bots true. I see. I see now.
Man, how does... How does that happen? This one makes sense. How did I do this? I did down three rights. I think the problem is I had to deep copy it. Like that. Wait. Uh... Where's the other one? Right here. Alright. With both of those, uh, we should be okay. Unless I typoed something. Nice. Needs to be set up. Oh, I see. Uh... Okay. 
Okay. Because... Is that really the end? Let me see. Alright, well, now it's functioning correctly because I deep copied everything. But, uh. I don't know why it stopped, though. I don't think it was supposed to stop. But after this, it goes here. So the direction is zero, right? So now it needs to go up. So up! Go up! Oh, there's nothing there. Wait, what? Did I mess up? Oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, there's an up here. It should have kept going. Oh wait, this is zero, huh? It is not equal to undefined. All right, now it should move. And it should keep going, they don't go left, left, I think it is left down, and that's it, okay. Then it's done. Dies here. Dies there. Okay. Conveyor belt's working. Now we need, let's get a, uh, let's get like a, what, what would we call this, a tape? Yeah, like something to read off of. Each one is going to be, I guess I'll start off blank, but we'll add stuff to it. Uh, the tape is going to be, have every, each one is going to have a color. The colors we already specified here. It can be whatever. We're just going to use this as an example so we can test stuff. Alright, so if we get to a branch, which I need to make here, let's make a branch uh, here. Let's do another belt. This is not all right, we're, we're gonna redesign this level now. <laughs> I need like a blank level. With nothing in it. Still have to decide how I wanna actually, oh, that is not right. Still have to decide how I wanna actually implement this yet. Cause it is kind of annoying to do it this way, but I can't think of a good system right off the bat. Maybe maybe I'll interpret a string or something with like these rules. But this is just me making the levels by hand. Like ideally the player's gonna design every level, so this is just the raw map itself. But let's test a the bot starts here. Let's test a branch that goes right. So the thing about the branch going right is it actually makes them go either up or down, depending on the color. So color one points left, so in this case, color one is red. So red is pointing down, so compare red, blue, I just use that as a sample. Oh wait, I make a new level. A new level, because I don't want to contaminate this one. I need a blank copy to start from, for testing purposes. So here's a branch. Um, this will be a conveyor, or conveyor belt, a 
right? These will both be belt rights, but we need to be able to watch the the bot choose the correct path based on its current belt, its current uh, tape. And they'll go here if it's not either of those colors. So, we already have the directions set up. If we're on a branch, our next direction is actually going to be defined differently. If next square dot type is equal to branch, otherwise, do this, I guess. All right. So for branch logic, check for a color. Um, the color on the tape that we're currently on. See if it matches one of the two colors of that branch. So, if bot tape zero dot color is equal to color one, or next square color one, move towards left side of the branch. Uh, Bot direction will be equal to left of. I'm gonna make two functions, one called left of and right of. That way I can easily translate this better. So left of next square. Yeah, left of next square. Or I guess we could provide a direction. Yeah, let's provide a direction. And else, if it's equal to color two, then we go to the right instead. So we go right of. And from there, we can make two functions that help with that. Left of direction. So this will return, if we're going left of that item, we are going, so right, we're going down, so we're always adding one. So we're going to return the direction plus one, modulus four. That way it wraps around. Right of is going to be direction minus one, modulus four. I don't know how modulus for negatives work, but we will find out in a second. Hopefully it works as I expect it to. Where negative one becomes, eh, it's probably not. Let's do this. If direction is less than zero, or if direction is equal to zero, it's gonna be a four. Which then it becomes three, so that works. All right, I think that's better. That's more stable in my opinion. Oh, and then we have to consume the tape. So, consume tape. Function. Consume tape. Well, it actually depends. Uh... Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, for writers, it's gonna depend, not readers. Consume tape. Take the fir Take off the first item. So it's going to be a shift, I believe. A uh, shift. Yeah. Bot tape dot shift. Done. All right. Let's see it. Uh, oh, wait, I loaded the wrong level. Let's load level two. Do it again. That's it. I was supposed to do one more thing. It went, oh, it did, it did do one more thing. It went down. Okay, so that's if the color was red, blue. So now I'm going to do uh, blue, red. 
and see if it responds appropriately. Also, the tape should be uh, different now. Blue-red. It should go up this time. And it didn't. It actually goes to the right, so it's not it's not actually doing what it's supposed to do. Um, it actually went right both times. I thought that meant down, but it means right. Um, okay. The so next square that type should have been equal to branch. So let me confirm that. Branch found. Okay, so it does say branch is found. So I'm guessing then these didn't match. Color. Did I not call it color? Bot tape zero dot color. Alright, matches color one, matches color two. Alright, matches color two, that's correct. So, oh, I put bot dirt without an underscore, that's why. That explains it. Alright, there we go, that's what I want. So, we got that, then it should have moved up. There it is, onto a belt, which moves it to the right. Okay, and then we do red-blue. Which moved it from here, down one, and then right one. Good. All right, that works. So we're good on making the branch functionality. Let me commit that. Add belt plus branch functionality. Okay. Before I continue though, I wonder if I should write like a, a test. What if I write some tests? That way, if this breaks later, we'll, we can fix it. I don't know if I should. I'm not totally against it, it's just time consuming. It's not very time consuming though, but I have to write like what it's supposed to be at the end. What the state is supposed to be. So if it doesn't end up in that state, then something's wrong. So I don't know if I'm willing to do that. Maybe. I mean, I guess. I don't think a sir is built into JavaScript either. I'd have to write my own. I mean, I guess I could for... It, it would be nice to have it. Like, how many people that actively build a game, or something, actually decide to spend time doing that? That might be kind of good practice. Just just because, like, I know I'm going to get this game done in time. I don't think the game project is, like, ultra-challenging. So, for me, maybe doing this would be a nicety. Be it show, like, extra... It's something I should do, because I have the ability to... So I think we will make that happen. What time is it? All right, I'm gonna go at least another hour, maybe two hours if I'm feeling uh, feeling good about what I got so far. But we're not gonna spend too much time today. I need sleep. Definitely want to wake up early to play Project Diva and then go from there. So, anyways, let's build some tests. I don't know if I really want to do... I, I more want to build this so that if I 
screw up later, I know I'm going to be able to rely on these tests to figure out where the bugs are. Because if I don't build these tests and something sneaky happens, then later I'm going to be screwed over because of this cross-functionality. Because I know this consume tape right now, it's going to get rid of one color, but I'm going to add functionality to like add to the tape and stuff. And then if I consume the wrong piece of tape, I need to know that right away, and the tests will tell me. Alright, so I think that's what I'm going to be doing. So I think I want to run this in reverse. I want to first... I want to import the game file into the game test file, and I want this to run the game test file instead of the game. And it will run the game after the tests succeed. I think that's how I want to do it. I, I'm basically building my own test suite thing because I'm using raw, uh, pure JavaScript, not using Node.js or anything like that. So we'll have to build it by hand. So I think I'm going to change that. So now we're importing this instead, but this is going to include this. So I think we go import. Uh, So all this I don't do here. We do this after the test. We'll just call this a run game. Which includes all this. Run game. Import game. I think that's all we need. Oh, and then I think we have to export default. Export default game. Uh, hold on. Require? I don't think it's require. Port. I don't want to use uh, Node though. I guess that defines a module. Type is module. Serious. That's interesting. Interesting. 
I don't think we have to worry about... Well, actually we kind of do have to worry about asynchronousness. Because async, so... I guess we can do something like this. Okay. Let me just read it to make sure I understand what we're actually doing here. Okay, we're literally just adding it to the dumb after we do something. Okay. Load script. Uh... Game. Run game. Alright, so that should run our game like normal. Alright, uh, going back to this now. Okay. So that is fine. What we need to do now is... I feel like we won't have access to that stuff until we actually load it all in. So, really the run game part is just blocked by the game test. But everything else has to be included. So... Run tests, and then run the game, I guess. I just wanted to keep all the game stuff out of this file. As much as I could. Okay, so if tests pass, we'll say... Test pass is false. So if test pass, run game. That shouldn't run the game. Then if I set run test to tr test pass to true, then it'll run the game. Oh, come on. Um. Oh, that, that might be asynchronous, huh? Hmm. Loaded. How about this? Well, you know what we could do? We could just wait. If it's asynchronous. Doesn't work. Uh, nice. How about... I guess I would have to actually... I'm not sure if I want... Like, is it really asynchronous? Let me, let me test.
Ah, it is. Um, okay. Test pass. Run game. One thousand. Okay. I mean, that works. I'm okay with that. So it's false. Keep, keep being false. And then, let's say after five seconds, if everything's good. Said to true. I just want to see. It, as long as it respects that, then we're good. Oh. What? Oh, I see, I see. This needs to be recursive then. Whatever. I guess we gotta make it recursive. Oh. Uh, run tests. That's what we'll call it. This is gonna be run test. Oh, I'm gonna call this uh, initialize game or something. There we go. Hello. Oh, I'm not running tests. How about we run the tests? Okay, there we go. So after five seconds it would start. So, here's what I need to do now. I need to run tests here and initialize game here. And that should do the same thing. It's just run test will run after this is game.js is loaded so that I can actually call the functions I need for the tests. So here's how testing is going to work. We just made it two of the functions. So we're going to actually define those uh, tests now. Basically, one is going to check that the bot uh, can move to another square on an update. So run tests. We'll basically make tests. Uh, describe uh, bot moving. It um, moves to the right initially. And then... I'm gonna go write this. So before each, we have to do something. We have to create a level, I guess. So... Or we can clear the level. Something like that. Yeah. Let's we'll say game grid is whatever. So we have to make all these. Test. 
test name. Running test suite. Test name. Uh, let's put a space in front of it or a dash or something. I don't know. That'd be cool. This is a callback. So for each it, we're gonna run this callback. So we're just gonna store this somewhere. This dot callback is callback, I guess. And then for it, Uh, return this. Uh, check name and another callback. Just gonna console log it for now. And then run callback. Like nineteen. Now every property before each of undefined. Describe. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Return this. Uh, I forgot how I'm supposed to do this. Uh, actually, I think I do return this here. Let's try that. There's something I'm supposed to do that I'm forgetting. I think it's just... I have to look this up. Function prototype. Uh, person. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost had had it right. It's defining. It's defining a class in JavaScript. It's kind of annoying. So this test name is test name. Here, console log it and this dot before callback I'm gonna call it before callback actually and this dot callback undefined Oops. for each before each
I guess I still have to return it? I don't feel like I have to. what I did. Why isn't it working? Oh, okay. That works, I guess. Sure. So call this stuff before callback. Before calling this stuff callback. 
This stock callback is not a function. What? Yeah, it is. Oh, wait. Uh, this stock callback is callback. Now it is. All right. So now I made some, made a test sweep. Easy. Let's uh, actually make it work. I guess we need more though. We need to do like expect. Expect, we need an expect in here. So we'll say function expect uh, test value one, test value two. If test value one is not equal to test value two, so the log fail. We're gonna return whatever it returns. I guess we're gonna say test pass is normally true and we set test pass to false. I guess that's the better way, that way we don't have to return anything. We just immediately set it. Test pass is false. Test failed. Uh, we don't know the test though, so I guess we have to pass that in, don't we? Uh, we'll say... Whatever this is... How is this not... What? Oh. There we go. Well, I guess this is not what we're looking for specifically. We're looking for... 25 blank spaces. All blank spaces. To be true. Alright, so level Y, X, uh, if object dot keys dot length is equal to zero or is not equal to zero, return false. I don't know why I need to call this though. Oh, I guess that's what the test it is. Test. Test. Test dot. Uh, uh, test name failed. Okay. Else. 
Let's pass. Um... Start time is new date. Not get time. an invalid destructuring assign oh I see uh, that's gonna fail just say Why do I have test names still? Oh, right here. Okay. Um, it should not run? Oh, you know what? It's because of this. It needs to be false. You know what? Let's set it as undefined. Then, when this is all done, let's run test. If uh, test pass is equal to undefined. Set to true. Because we're done. Alright. Cool. That works. Uh, not a number of milliseconds, though. Hold on. Not a number of milliseconds. You're right. There we go. And then it starts running. Once the test pass. Uh, level... Blink level exists. Okay, so what if blank level doesn't exist? Let's test that. Let's put this in here. Value is false. That should make the test fail, so nothing happens. Can't run the game. Once the test pass, game starts running. Alright, we're good. We have a test suite. Let's go! Now we can do what we want. Um... Bot moves to the right. Did I incorporate the before each? I think the before each gets called. Yeah, before callback gets called each time. Uh, bot moves to the right each update. So we will do... What are we doing in here? We are doing... We'll initialize a level initially. We don't even have to initialize the level, we just have to have the bot in there. I guess we do have to initialize the level though. 
game grid equals create grid five by five. And run the bot once. So we just run the bot and the bot should now be one to the right. So we're looking if uh, game grid let's see y position is three. Oh, we didn't place the bot though. Let's place the bot somewhere. Place bot at zero comma three. Two. Game grid three one dot bot. Then we pass. Else turn false. Alright, test failed. Uh, probably, let me see. Oh, you know what? The game stay has to be turned on. So, we'll actually make it so the game state is reset each time. So, before each... Game state will be equal to uh, waiting. Game state is waiting. Uh, bot x is negative one. Bot y is negative one. Bot direction is right. Bot state is alive. Bot tape is just have this by default. So, we have to activate the game state when we start, so we'll do... Game state is running. That still failed. Alright. Or we can do... Wait, that logic isn't in here. We should be able to run it. Oh, this logic. Last game update is zero. So that should run now. Let me let me put this in here, see if that gets updated. Literally just says test failed, so that does not get up called. What about this? Nope. Alright. Uh the heck? Oh, you know what? I bet you this doesn't run. So we have to actually invoke it. Um... I have a feeling this is supposed to be running. Running. Nope. Weird. That's running. This is not running. Oh, I probably have to do this. What? What?
Okay, there we go. Um, now... That we're calling that... I have to figure out why it's failing. Bot is true. Why'd it go up? Wait, is that up? It did go right. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Test still failed. What? Bot... Two... One... Bot... Dot bot. Bot is not defined. Oh. Test failed. What? Literally. It literally says bot. How's that a fail? Alright, how about console.log this? I need to see it for myself. How is it blank? Oh, this just gets rendered. It doesn't alter the game grid. So what we have to actually check is not this. Check the bot X and bot Y. Bot X needs to be one. Bot Y needs to be zero or two. Valid left hand, what? Oh, dang it. There we go, test pass now. Bot moves to the right initially. Uh, bot obeys conveyor belt rules. So let's make a grid of conveyor belts. We can just use level one as the example. All right, so game grid will be level one. I can, I guess I can call load level. Yeah, load level. Load level. Level one, bot X is zero two. Bot Y is, there we go. And then run bot, uh, over and over. How many times do we have to run it? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're now eleven times. And then the bot's position should now be Y one X two. Cannot read property two of undefined. What? I mean, property two. Where is that? Ninety one? updated how is it not working all of a sudden
Oh, in game game 91. I'm not even paying attention. Uh, can I read property two? Shouldn't game grid be defined though? Load level, level one. I feel like it should be loaded. Unless I'm... Oh, I'm not supposed to make game grid equal to that. Duh, okay. Test failed. What? I mean, test failed. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Run, run bot. Uh, we'll put testing here. Test, testing. So, or testing. So we can put testing is true here. Uh, still failed. Wait, now it passed. What? I guess it just did save my changes or whatever. Alright, I need to disable this uh, debug stuff. Disable this. Uh, render game, if not testing. Render game. Okay. Test pass. So if I, like... If for some reason I decided, okay, the conveyor is not going to move the bot for this, it should fail. Yeah, so if I mess with it, a test can possibly fail now. Which is good, that's what we want. Um, what else do I have to do? Bot obeys branch rules. So we'll load up level 2. And we'll run... We only have to do, I think, two iterations. We go one, two, three. Oh, three iterations. Auto base branch rules, so one, two, three. Um, it's actually going to be... What is the default? Red? Yeah, red. One, two, three. So it's going to end up at this spot. So bot X is equal to... Two? And bot y is zero one two three. Return true, otherwise return false. Bot obeys branch rules. I need to get rid of that debug message. Okay. Cool. Test passed. And let's do another one. Bobby's uh, branch rules. Bottle Bray's branch rules. With the other. With different tape. With different colored tape. So we're going to actually change the bot tape here. To be. Bot tape will be equal to. Color blue instead of color red. And that's going to make it so. The bot needs to now end up boom, boom, boom here instead, which is a Y of 1 and an X of 2. So it does pass. Now, if I somehow mess with this, one of these tests is going to fail now. And that'll let me know, hey, something's wrong. And the other test should fail if I mess with that one. Boom. Boom. So, our test suite of all the things we've done so far. Let me commit this. That way in the future, if we break something, we'll know. Add in testing suite. Okay. We had to build it by hand because uh, we're not using external libraries, so... But I'm, that was a good exercise. Definitely uh, enjoyed making that one. So now that we have our testing suite, I think we can kind of do like test-driven development in a sense. We will 
write a test, it will fail, then we'll make it pass, kind of. Uh, I don't want to do this too much because it's very time consuming, but we can do it, um... We can do it to some degree because we can pr at least prove that the test fails. So, bot obeys writer rules. Uh, so, bot obeys writer rules. We're basically going to have a level we load. We don't have the level yet, so we're going to go make the level. And we're going to have a writer here. So, I guess we'll have a writer right. Oh, wait, that's wrong. Let's do a writer down here. I guess writers need a color, don't they? Yeah, they, they do have a... They're only supposed to have one color. Color. So I need to fix this. By default, it'll be red. Okay. Oh, you know what we need to test? We need to test, um... Uh... Bot tape is reduced by one when... when passing through a branch. So if we take this test here, we're gonna check if the tape is good now. So we're gonna see if bot tape is equal to uh, color blue. I think this will fail because this is a this is a different like instance of the object, but we'll see. There might be a way to make it pass. Yeah. So I think this... Nope, that doesn't work either. We have to do like... We have to see if the tape length is equal to 1. And bot tape 0 dot color is equal to blue. And if it is, we're good then. There we go. That's a pass. So if for some reason, like, we didn't actually consume the tape here... It'll fail. So, that's how we can prove that test is working. Bot tape is reduced by one when passing through a branch. Through a different side of the branch. Through a different branch. So this time we're gonna do this test. And then we'll do kind of the same thing. We're actually setting the tape length to only have the color blue. So the tape should be... have nothing in it at this point. And so that test will pass, but if we don't consume the tape again... ends up with a failed test there. And we can make multiple tests fail. So... All right, back over here, Bot Obey's writer rules. So for a writer, we need to add to either the end of the tape or replace the current value we have in the tape. So that's dependent on the state of the brand writer. So there's gonna be two types of writers actually. Um, so we'll have a writer down without overwriting and then we'll have another one with I, g I could technically use the same level and put the bot in a different place like that's a that's a trick I can do here so I can do a writer up here with overwrite set to true so we're gonna call this method uh, overwrite uh, overwrite Defines whether it turned on the. Oh, wait, this is the wrong place for this. If turned on, the writer overwrites 
the current tape position instead of appending. So default behavior, it appends. Overwrite instead erases the current color on the tape. So that's what we're going to test here for this one. Um, what else? We have to test double belts, but we'll get to that momentarily. Let's do this first. So bottle base, so after we're done with the writer rules, we'll go back to belt rules. We'll implement that, and I think we're done for today. We have some basic, like, game mechanics in. We have a basic game loop. We have a bot moving around and obeying certain rules based on the tape colors. And that's all we need. That's, like, the core of the gameplay. Then we have to... Tomorrow, I don't think we're building user interaction, but we are building uh, more game logic. We'll be building the rest of the game logic out in preparation for the actual game. So I'm excited. We're going to have a core, the core game logic going today. Uh, so Bottle Bay's writer rules. How are we going to test this? We need to place a bot here, which we already do. We need to load level 3. And we're going to give it a tape of just blue. Actually, let's give it a tape of nothing. That's fine. Then, well, actually, if we're testing a pending, we should have a tape with something on it already. So I guess we can use the default tape here. We'll run the bot one, two, three times. The bot X and Y should be... The Y should be at position three. The X should be at zero, one, two. And... The tape length. Let's see, the tape length should be. Bot tape. You know what we can do? I know what we can do. Bot obeys writer movement rules. We'll have one for movement rules, so it should still move correctly. And then we'll have one for writer. Uh, tape rules. Bottle Bay's writer tape rules has correct tape when appending. So here, we're looking at the bot tape. Dot length is equal to 3 and bot tape 2 dot color is equal to let's see it should be red so that test should uh both tests should no one test should pass the other should fail because it obeys writer movement rules already this one fails because we haven't made the tape appending yet so we're gonna make the tape appending behavior now so i'm probably gonna make a switch here based on the type That way we can implement different types into a nice little switch statement instead. This is case will be the branch case. Then we have the default case. And like I said, as we're refactoring code, right, we're making sure nothing breaks, so that's why the tests are there. If, if we do mess up something, now we have tests to prove, hey, you broke something else that was working before fix it. So this is why test-driven development is powerful if you get to that point and just spend some time setting up a test suite. It's probably not as useful for like a fan hobby project that's only gonna go for nine days but uh still it's very cool to actually have when you start implementing stuff. It makes your game bug free so we're not really gonna have any bugs at least we shouldn't um, because of the system. It will detect our bugs for us, this test suite. Anyways, here we are with the writer. So for the writer, um, what I want to do is Check the 
so technically we don't have to do the appending yet. Or we do the appending, but we don't check whether or not it's in append mode. So we will append tape and we'll append based on color. Uh, next square dot color. So we'll write that function real quick. Append tape. Append tape is simply a push with whatever color we specify. Uh, waiting is not defined? What? Oh wait, there's a syntax error. Uh, there we go. So the test still failed. Append tape. Did we not actually set the tape? We did. Bot tape dot push. The color. Oh. Color. How about that? There we go. Oh, now this fails. What? Obey's writer movement rules. Ah, we haven't moved it now. See? Getting those bugs already. Bot direction is equal to direction. I guess since this applies to everything though, we can put it down here. I assume it's common to every single thing, so we're just gonna put it down there. And now these fail. Obey's branch, oh, yeah, right. The bot direction will be based on different directions like that, so you can't just use the next C. This is why tests are useful. It tells you what doesn't work anymore. Uh. Alright, well this is still broken, so we're gonna have to figure- oh, wait, why- I thought I deleted you. There we go, passed. Everything's passing. It would be nice to have, um, what do you call it? It would be nice to have it show how many passed slash failed. I think that would be a nice bonus, so let's do that. Um, so we'll keep a running total of total tests and pass tests. Is zero. So. Uh, where are we gonna put this? Let's put this in here. Our uh, test suite. So we'll go and say test suite. Test suite dot total test plus plus. Full test plus plus. Pass test plus plus. And then we will output that when we're done. Test results, uh, number passed. So we'll say test suite dot Test suite that passed tests. Passed, comma. Uh, test suite dot total tests minus test suite dot pass tests. Tell us the number of failed tests. Comma. Uh, test suite dot total tests. Total. And I'm missing a parenthesis somewhere. Or not. What? Oh, I'm missing a plus. And test suite is not defined. 
but it is our test suite. Hmm. Well, aren't I always returning this? So yeah, this should be passing itself as they were doing this. Oh, Chesui is not defined here. I see, I see. Wait a second. At this point... Oh, inside of expect, I think. 45. Yeah, inside of expect. So we have to pass that along. I guess we'll just pass it. Yeah, pass this. Keep going. Can I property total test of undefined? Oh, okay. I guess that didn't work. Uh, what else can we try? Let me think. Well, if we made this global, it would probably be fine. I kind of thought I was doing that here, but I guess not. So we're gonna change this up a little. Oh, you know what? It's not defined here. That's why. If I just do this, that would work. Yep. Okay, good. Um, in that case, let's move this into here now. And Tesu is not defined again. Yeah, it's outside of that scope, but inside of this scope, it's kind of silly. Alright. Cool. Looks good. Nine pass, zero failed, nine total. Cool. I kind of want to move this, though. I don't, I don't like that this is on a separate line. I want to say, like, test pass and then the time, I guess. And to do that, we need to store the time in here. We'll say, like, this dot start time. We can move that into here. This dot start time. Now we can move this, this whole thing actually, into here. Doing some refactoring here. And step this, we'll just add it onto that string there. Like so. There you go. And then we can get rid of all those extra lines that we now no longer need. Perfect. Good, uh, good refactor. Definitely reduces the bloat when it comes to having some tests with the same lines of code being copy-pasted over and over. That's a general no-no. We want to try to avoid that. Start time's not defined. Okay. Uh, let's see. I 
forgot to change it to this dot start time. And it's not this dot start time, it's actually test suite dot start time. Test suite. Still not defined, did I set it? Yeah, I did. Well, that could be a problem. Like if I call the before each, is that what I need to do? Call the before each, not the it? Now that doesn't really make sense though. Like it should be defined here. So by the time we get down to here, it should be set up. Oh, this is inside of the callback. Oh, yeah, I missed this. Whoops. That can go. My bad. All right, it's looking good. Test suite. Test suite is a go. Uh, let's see. Add in writer tape rules. And starting code for writer tape rules. Uh, I guess I'll say append rules. Um, compacted or refactored test suite. All right, looking good so far. So has correct tape when appending and obeys writer movement rules. Let's now look at has correct tape when overwriting. So with overwriting, the tape length, tape length will be two, but the color of the first value should be whatever the color of the writer is. So it should be red. kind of a bad test because the first color is red so maybe we'll change it here we'll say bot tape equals blue red instead that way we're testing if it's actually changing so again we'll do three iterations that should work So it doesn't, because obviously uh, we we don't have overwrite functionality yet, so we're going to add that in. Oh, you know what? I, I need to change this, though. The bot needs to start... On level 3, we have a writer up here with overwrite set to true. So we need to start the bot there in order to make a fair test that we can actually pass. Because that was technically an unpassable test. What? Zero one. Zero one. What? Oh, you know what? It's just two steps. My bad. Wrote a bad test there. It only moves two steps. Um, okay, so it does fail. We need to make it pass now. So we'll go back in here. If next square dot overwrite. And we're going to overwrite tape. Else append tape. So for overwrite tape, we just take whatever's in front. Uh, in this case, yeah, zero. And set equal, like so. Now the test is passing, so we're good. 
All right, what else do we have to test? We have to test. Um, let's see. I feel like there was something I should test. Oh yeah, I need to test a branch where it has a completely different color. The behavior that happens. So, basically, bot goes uh, forward if no color matched. So for example, here we're loading again level two and we're going with a tape of blue. Let's actually change it to yellow. So this is a red blue branch. So if it's yellow, it should end up going here instead. So our position should be two, two. Should be one, two, it's just two steps. So that is a pass already. So we don't have to modify anything since that works. Because I think we, we kind of made that logic earlier where we just tested by color. So that's kind of an edge case there. Let's also test, um, let's now do double belts. So we haven't touched on double belts yet. Um, Bot goes, bot goes right when approaching a double belt from the left. Bot goes right when approaching a double belt left to right from the left. Kind of confusing, but basically it's going to have like an up down and a left right and we're coming from the left, so we should be following the belt to the right. So I'm gonna make a test level here for that. This is gonna be a right belt. However, it also has a belt right, but we're gonna add a direction two, and the direction two contains another direction. So we're gonna have a belt that points right, and then the secondary belt points down. So it's two belts on one tile. And the behavior for this is supposed to be, if we're coming from the left, we go right, but if we're coming from the top, we go down. So we're gonna be testing both of those scenarios here. So we'll load up level four. We'll start at position zero, or in this case, we'll start at position yeah, zero comma two. We automatically move to the right, so we're gonna do two iterations. One, two, and we should end up at position two comma two. That's where we should end up there. Uh, what did I miss? I don't. We don't care about bot tape right now. Level four is not defined. What? I literally defined it right here. Oh, you save. How about we save one day? All right, so that's already passing. However, let's throw a curveball. Bot goes down. We're approaching a double belt. Down, or up down, from the top. So right now, its direction says it's pointing to the right, but it's got a direction two variable. So we're gonna throw this game a curveball and say start the bot at position this position. Position one comma one. And run the bot one two times. And the final position should be a Y of three. And an X position of one. So this is definitely going to fail because we do not have Direction 2 programmed. It's going to think it wants to go to the right instead. So we're going to have to fix that now by writing the implementation. So up here, um, right now we just say next square equals whatever. So 
so for each of these, we actually need to check if there's a direction two. And if there is, then we have to check which direction we're coming from and determine if that direction is the same. So if uh, next square dot direction two, then and so we're gonna make two functions matches up and down where we're gonna give it our current direction and the direction of the direction two because our current direction is up so if next square dot direction two, I guess we can just do this. This is actually easier to read, I think. Is equal to uh, up or it's equal to down. I guess either of those two would be fine. All right. So if that's true, we're going to use direction 2 instead of direction 1. So next square will be the same. However, our direction is not determined anymore by this. So this is going to go away. Direction is now determined possibly by direction two, otherwise by direction one. So if we want to, we can uh, simplify this logic a little bit. Because this is our conditional. So we could say bot direction is equal to, this is the conditional. If that's true, use direction two. Otherwise use direction one. See, I'm super confident about uh, modifying code like this because I know if I mess something up, my tests will tell me and I can just go back and try a different approach. Like, that's the beauty of test-driven development is that I can uh, just literally destroy my code with confidence that I can build the code I want to build. And if it doesn't work or if it breaks something else, I will know. So we can see here, can't read property direction two of undefined. So sometimes direction two is undefined. Uh, okay. Where do we see that? Or... One thirteen. That's weird because I'm usually checking for direction two first. For check if it's defined or not. Not equal to. Oh, you know what? If it's zero, that would be a problem. If it's not equal to undefined. Uh, let's see. Oh, next square is undefined. Hold on. Let me think about this. Next square... Oh, I messed up the direction, didn't I? Or did I? Wait a sec. What? Also, shouldn't this be bot dir underscore? Next square should be defined. Did I define a level? I did. And I started at 1-1? One, one? Yeah. Oh, you know what? The bot is supposed to be different. 
There we go. Alright, test passed. Now, if I had some, like... I guess we have to test more, though. We're not... That's not thorough. We have to test, like, to the right. Well, I guess we tested to the right. Let's test left. Buck goes... Uh... Let me think. Buck goes right when approaching a double belt. That is... Left to right. We're trying to throw some edge cases now. From the uh, right. So it's going to go right, and then it's going to go right again. That's our test. So we're going to do one iter- uh, one, two. Two iterations. This time the bot direction is left. And we are going to use a test case of- you know what? Let's do- Th this belt is actually perfect, so we'll place the bot here. At- Position zero one two zero one two the two two the bot position should end up at two two so that is also a pass so we know that works and let's test one more case let's test two double belts let's do a belt here belt up. Direction 2 is left, and we'll do a double belt here. Let's see, what, what am I trying to test? I want to test coming from the bottom. Do I end up up here? Okay, we'll, we'll test that. Bot goes up. When approaching a double belt, that is down to up from the bottom. So we'll start the bot here at position 2 and position Y of 4. The bot direction will be moving up and we'll run it for two steps. One, two. And we're looking for an X of position 2, 2. And that is also a pass, so looks like everything, all the rules are working. Okay, I think that takes care of, that takes care of writer rules. Um, that also takes care of double belts, and it takes care of regular belts. So we're off to a good start. We have quite a bit of game logic in already. And we have a test suite, so everything's looking good, guys. That's gonna be it for me for today. Um, I do want to sleep. I want to play Project Diva, like first thing when I wake up. Looking forward to that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Tomorrow, day two, we're looking at pushing out more of the game mechanics and starting work on hopefully some kind of like user or uh, game logic so that we can have some puzzles. So... Uh... Implement double belt logic. Cool. Anyways, for those of you that tuned in, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.